this crusade, this war on terrorism, uh, is going to take a while. This crusade, this war on terrorism, uh, is going to take a while. And the American people must be patient. You can see in the foreground the flags of the 117 member states which are flying. And now the car approaches the door. This surely is a moment which will live in the memory of those who witness it. Pope Paul VI, the spiritual leader of more than half a billion people all over the face of the earth, inheritor of a lineage of 2,000 years, is greeted in this house by the chief representative of a world organization made up of member nations who can count over two billion people of many kinds and many creeds, an organization which man brought into being 20 years ago. His Holiness descends, is greeted by the United Nations Chief of Protocol, who of course met him at Kennedy Airport this morning. The Secretary General awaits inside the threshold of the United Nations building. Hello and welcome everybody to a new video from Jörg, Juggler 6060, our 66, <laughs> 6060, <laughs> no, no, it's Juggler 66, Hour of the Truth. You were expecting, of course, probably coming out the next reading of me doing the book uh, Exploding the Israel Deception by Steve Wahlberg. But there have been some changes in the last few weeks uh, concerning that book reading. And the changes are that I found out that there is another book by the same author, uh, Steve Wahlberg, that is called End Time Delusions. And that book, End Time Delusions, is actually a, um, how do you say that, a, a, a work put together of three books that he wrote apart and then put into one. And um, when you want to know what these are about, then you have to stay with us. Us, that is because I am not alone, because I did Exploding the Israel Deception reading alone, but today I got a little bit in reinforcement on my side. The Holy Ghost made it possible that uh, Tom Fress from Inquisition Update is joining me today, and we will go into the reading of the book End Time Delusions. Before I will introduce Tom to you correctly, I will tell you what happened. When we go into the table of contents of this book, you will see that it is comprised of four sections. Rapture Delusion, Seven-Year Tribulation Delusions, Antichrist Delusions and Israel Delusions. And the Israel Delusions is dealing with the subject of exploding the Israel Deception. So these are four different uh, sections, three books that the author wrote before, comprised in one now. So I said, well... This is a so important book, I want to read it, and I asked Tom to support me in that, and he said, I'm glad to come on you, uh, I'm glad to come with you on Skype, and now we are connected on Skype to start the reading of the book End Time Delusions, including the very important um, Exploding the Israel Deception, which will then be continued, but only when we come to section 4 of this book, End Time Delusions. So that's why you are now watching the fifth video in this playlist, 
and you are just coming to the beginning of a new book reading. It's just a change of plans. And um, I, I can actually tell you why. Because we have today the 27th of May 2020. And already since three weeks, I'm more or less always home because I'm more or less unemployed because of this corona stuff and I cannot drive my taxi. So I have much time at home to spend, to read things and prepare things, do videos and all recordings. And I always wanted to sit down to do the next part, uh, which is chapter three and chapter four of uh, Exploding the Israel Deception. But something kept me away from that. The Holy Spirit wasn't with me, and when the Holy Spirit is not with me, I just do not read. I know that he has a reason that I don't understand at that moment. And the moment was that when it came to a conversation with me and Tom last week, when we did our Bible study, or at least at the time we came together when we usually do our Bible study, we came to discuss this book, End Time Delusions, and we came to the point that we wanted to read that together. And that's why the Holy Spirit restrained me from keeping the re reading the book is Exploding the Israel Deception on my own. Because now I have Tom Fress as a reinforcement to read it together with me. And I very warmly welcome you, Tom, to the table tonight. Hello. Hello, Yerk, and I'm very happy to be with you. And if my voice holds out, we'll... Uh, we'll uh make a good use of this book. I just want to make sure the listeners understand that uh, Exploding the Israel Deception, which you began to read here, is part of this book. So the listeners aren't going to miss anything. They're going to get more material out of this book than they would have gotten out of Exploding the Israel Deception alone. Exactly. And so, and so uh, uh, we're just postponing the conclusion of exploding the Israel deception until we get to that portion of this book. So uh, you explained it pretty well. just want to make sure the listeners understand because it might sound complicated to some people. This just happens to be a larger book that includes uh, all of uh, Wolberg's previous writings, including exploding the Israel deception. So... Uh, I, I'm happy to participate with you. My voice will hold out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the wonderful thing is that a brother of mine uh, who lives in Switzerland found the book uh, End Time Delusions that we are going to read now, this one here, and he found it in Germany, in, in German, not in Germany, sorry, in German, translated into German. It is uh, then called Endzeitwahn. So, End Time Delusions in German. Uh, and uh, I read that one. So, I'm familiar with everything that is in the English book. I just read it in German and not in English yet. And it's a really wonderful book. And what I found out is when I go to read that book in German, I don't need very much of explanation next to it because I thought every time when I thought, oh, I have to make a comment here and I have to make a comment there, um, I just read a little bit further and then the author explained it all. So it is really a self-explaining book. It's something that I very rarely found, uh, if not to say I never found yet. So that's wonderful with that book. And that's also something that you will see while we do this reading here. Of course, Tom will have many more comments than came into my mind. And he probably will here and there add a comment because uh, that's just what Tom does because he have such a, has such a fine understanding of scripture and of the events talked about in this book and so much more experience than I have. But uh, I, for myself, I found it is not necessary to comment very much. Therefore, I had a very easy read in the book. And uh, it just took me four or five days altogether to read through all the pages in, in German and, and read all that stuff up to the part of the Israel deception exploded. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the book now because uh, the book is easy to be found on the internet. I just found it as a PDF, free to download, and you can do the same because in the description box of this video, I will, of course, provide the link that is here in a, uh, in a comment, as you can see, um, where you can download it for yourself and then you can read along with the book together with us or you read it for yourself. No problem. You don't need our reading when you have an fine understanding of yourself, but we are offering to you not only to read this book, but also to discuss it. That is what Tom has done all through the years in his ministry of Inquisition Update, that he not only reads books, but he explains them, he discusses them, he gives much more information than the author just do, because he connects things with different books and different time, span, time frames, and that's what makes his broadcasts so wonderful and so interesting. 
uh, that I'm always uh, bound when uh, I listen to him on First Amendment Radio or wherever he came on uh, with his, uh, with his um, Inquisition Update broadcast. And that's why I'm so glad that he joins me today in reading this book. Now, there's one concern that Tom has and that I also share a little bit about people who say, oh, but Tom, why are you, and Jörg, why are you now citing a Seventh-day Adventist writer? Don't you know that Steve Wahlberg is a Seventh-day Adventist? That's an interesting point. And because you know that neither Tom nor me belong to any quote-unquote denomination in this world, we don't join any congregation, we don't join any church, we don't have any biblical community besides with the close people we are very close to and we love, like uh, we have this Bible study every Sabbath with Brett Norman via Skype, that is our ecclesia, that is our community, and of course Tom next to that has his family, whoever he has there, especially of course his wife he has as a companion. I live alone just with my mother. Brett lives completely alone. We are not associated with any church, not with Seventh-day Adventist or anything else, just to make that very clear in the beginning. So we are reading this book and I have to tell you it took me a long time to find out that Steve Wahlberg actually is an SDA because in the book Exploding the Israel Deception, which I first read of him completely, there is not one eschatological explanation of Seventh-day Adventist dogma. And I think Tom can agree with me on that, because some years ago, now already nine years ago, almost ten at the end of 2010, beginning of 2011, Tom read the book Exploding the Israel Deception by Steve Wahlberg. I don't know if you ever had the time, Tom, to read End Time Delusions for yourself completely, but you read Exploding the, End, uh, Exploding the Israel Deception 10 and 11 years ago. And I think that you can confirm that there is not one word of Seventh-day Adventist exegesis or eschatology in that book. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct as far as I can tell. Uh, Steve Wolberg could be a Baptist or a Presbyterian or, or any other denomination, uh, uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't preach uh, what I perceive to be any Seventh Day Adventist dogma, as you said. Uh, matter of fact, I think I read both of these books, "Exploding the Israel Deception" and uh, uh, "End Time Delusions," before I realized that Steve Wolberg is Seventh Day Adventist. But, uh, and I'm familiar with Seventh Day Adventist teaching and some of their eschatology, which I don't agree with, but it's neither here nor there. But I don't see any attempt on Steve's part to uh, indoctrinate uh, people into Seventh-day Adventism. This is uh, dealing with the Bible and the clear text of the Bible. And, uh, and he's comparing the clear text of the Bible with popular... Uh, evangelical uh, eschatology, and you can clearly see, as Steve Wolberg is so highly qualified to point out, there's a vast difference between what the clear text of the Bible says about Bible prophecy, particularly the 70th week of Daniel, and what is taught in the churches. There's a distinct, a very clear, and quite frankly, a startling difference between the clear teaching of the Bible and what the churches teach. And that's what we need to know. Jesus said, see that no one deceive you. Our, our, our mission is to point out the deceptions and the delusions that will be so popular in the end times. And what we're going to find out is that these delusions these deceptions are the main course of modern-day Protestant and evangelical churches. It's in the churches where these delusions are taught. And uh, uh, it's, it's a terrible indictment of, of the, of the uh, non-Roman Catholic churches in this country. I dare not call them Protestant because they're not Protestant anymore. And uh, uh, it's because of the delusion that they teach that they no longer qualify as a Protestant or evangelical church. 
they'd be more more better uh, uh, classified as pseudo Roman Catholic churches, and uh, I think that's a term that I've never even used before, pseudo Roman Catholic Church. But that's what their teachings uh, uh, indicate that they are pseudo Roman Catholic churches. They are not Protestant churches. If they were Protestant churches, they would expose these delusions just as C- Steve Wolberg is doing in the book. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, and uh, they would adhere to the Bible, Tom, because when we see things explained as he does in his book, he speaks about um, preterism, he speaks about futurism, and he speaks about historicism. Historicism is not the view of the Protestant reformers only, it is actually the complete returning to real apostolic eschatology, meaning to the real understanding of the Bible of the first century that the apostles had who were all with Jesus Christ, who all knew Jesus Christ personally. And their understanding and teaching of the Bible was 100% conformed to God's understanding of the Bible, because otherwise he wouldn't have chosen those apostles. And that's what we are going to do. We are going to explain to you the end-time delusions, as Stephen Wahlberg called his book. We are going to explain these end-time delusions because they are all not scriptural. They are just not according to the word of God. And that is, to Tom and to me, the only authority that counts. Tom and I, and I say this with all confidence, we have no other authority than the Word of God. And we measure everything against the Word of God. Like the Bible asks of us in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 11, if I'm not mistaken, where it speaks about the Bereans who were better Jews than those in Thessalonica because they read the Bible daily and measured everything in the world against the Bible. And that's what we are doing. And therefore we won't be thrown off because Steve Wolberg chooses to work for or be in the Seventh-day Adventist or whatever congregation. I don't care where he is. As long as he speaks the truth, the man is my brother in Christ. And that's a very important point you have to understand. And if now you say, well, I don't care because you're reading a Seventh-day Adventist, I'm going to switch off. Well, you're welcome. Switch off, but then you will never understand the end-time delusions like we understand them. Because from the Bible alone, most people don't get that understanding. Because if most people would get the understanding of the end-time delusions from the Bible reading alone, then the world would not be betrayed in the state that they are betrayed right now. Then you would see that there is no patriotism but for the kingdom of God and not for America or Germany or Belgium or whatever country you are living in but that you must be a patriot for your King of Kings, that's Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that you must be a patriot for the Kingdom of God and not for any earthly kingdom, which is all going to vanish anyway, when you understand the Bible. And Paul made the point a few times, Jesus made the point a few times, don't let any man deceive you. Well, if you have the impression that Tom and I are deceiving you when you measure what we say against the Bible, Well, then don't listen to us. But when our words hold up in the light of the Bible and the Word of God, then you maybe should reconsider and listen to us and listen to Steve Wahlberg. Because we are going to expose any false teaching he uses in this book. And I can tell you there is some false teaching coming or at least some teaching that everybody teaches and another teaching that is not so frequently taught, he will not teach, but we will teach to you. Dealing, for example, with the 1260-day year prophecy and the time span that that encounters. Okay? But that's so far for the introduction. Now let's go into the book. And right in the beginning we see uh, it has a subtitle that is called The Rapture, The Antichrist, Israel, and the End of the World. Now, this means that this book, End Time Delusions, that we are showing to you here in the cover, that this book deals with the rapture, which is, of course, a quote-unquote secret rapture, 
It deals with many, many books that have been written in that regard, uh, called the finale and all that stuff. And you, of course, in America are bombarded with books and movies and everything around that, uh, dealing with that subject, much more than we are over here in, uh, in, in Europe in that regard. So the point is that rapture will be explained and exposed. It will be taught in this book who the real biblical, historical and prophetic Antichrist is. We will explain to you that there is only one true Israel and that is an Israel of the Spirit and why there is a nation state in Israel at this time in the world necessary for the Antichrist but not biblical. And we will speak of course of the last things that will happen meaning and the end of the world. Now, when we go into the very first pages, you see this book is quite uh, modern. It is from 2004. We have 2020 now, so it's only 16 years old. But he says here, unless otherwise identified, scripture quotations are taken from the new King James Version. Why did I highlight that in green? Well, because that obliges me to open up my browser that I have opened here. That is the... Uh, Bible index of the 1611 King James Bible, and whenever we encounter Bible texts in this book, I will open the King James online, and we will read from the King James online and not from the new King James Version, which is a corrupted Bible. He also says in his next sentence, scriptures marked KJV are from the King James Version. Well, I personally think, well, then why don't you skip the New King James altogether? He mixes here, and I'm sorry to say this, this maybe sound harsh, he mixes here the holy with the profane. Because the New King James Bible is a Bible that has been altered in many, many places, many, many places, many, many verses, many, many chapters, and um, neither Tom nor me are going to ever read from the New King James Bible. So therefore we compare that and the time when I have time to, because I just downloaded the PDF today, I have time to prepare the next reading of us. I will change all the Bible text that he put in his book from the New King James and will change them into the King James Version. So we will make sure that you will always only have the King James Version Bible text available when we speak of biblical understanding in this book. Yeah. Let's just go to the next page. He has some special thanks to give to, and I'm just going to go over that because that is not that very much of importance. There are many people, of course, who help people like Steve Wahlberg to write these books, doing research, uh, supporting his daily work and daily life that he can uh, concentrate on the work that he is doing for the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit. Um, at least the last sentence I'm going to read to you, or the last two, because he says, to all faithful Protestants who have gone before us, yeah, the cloud of witnesses, as you saw in the, uh, in, in, or you heard in the song singing in the beginning of this video, some of whom have sacrificed their lives for our Lord and from whom I have learned so much. Above all, to Jesus Christ, my Messiah and Savior, because your agonizing death and victorious resurrection have made even this life possible, with all its blessing, blessings and eternal life. May your name, Jesus Christ, be praised forever and ever. Amen. And then we come to the praise for the end-time delusion. So this is a little bit... Uh, other people who were giving comments on the work of the book End Time Delusions by Steve Wahlberg after they read it. And Tom, whenever, of course, you want to say something, then please interrupt me with your comment, okay? Okay. I am impressed, says Dave McPherson, who, is, who himself is a researcher and a journalist, author of the book The Rapture Plot and the Incredible Cover-Up, I am impressed with the real scholarship and accuracy displayed in Steve Walberg's new book, End Time Delusions, which, we understood already from the introduction, is not a new book, 
but as a compilation or a putting together of three before existing books into just one book. Dr. Nigel Lee, uh, Doctor of Theology and a PhD, Professor Emeritus Queensland Presbyterian Theological College, says, quote, End time delusions should prove to be a popular counter to the plethora of preteristic unpredictions as well as pre tribulistic tri, pre no, sorry pre tribulistic prognostications which plague the beginning of our new millennium. Speaking of the third millennium, the years and for those and on. For, for your listeners that uh, don't understand his his English. Uh, this this uh, Francis Nigel, this Dr. Francis Nigel Lee, is condemning the current fodder in the churches, the current prophetic teaching of the churches today. That is preterism and futurism. He's condemning both as erroneous, and they are erroneous. Preterism, many of you have not heard of it, but it says that, uh, that uh, uh, the Antichrist uh, came uh, soon after 70 AD, okay, and has been since done away with, and that, the, the, that Christianity is on the business about building a global, quote-unquote, Christian uh, world, okay? That's false. That is a false uh, eschatological interpretation of Scripture. This is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a Christian world. Okay? This is a world governed by Antichrist. Now, while there are Christians in the world... This is not a Christian world. We wait for the kingdom of Christ. It is yet to come. And so uh, you may believe the, 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 the popular uh, teaching from the churches uh, that uh, the Antichrist is either already done away with and we're on the business about building an, a, a, a fully Christian society or you could be of the school that I was in when I was uh, a young Christian man. Uh, I shouldn't say too young because I believed it until I was about 50 years old. A futurist, which means the Antichrist won't come until the last seven years of time or just before Christ's literal visible return. And uh, that too, which the author calls pre-tribulationistic prognostications here in this text, he's literally referring to the most popular teaching in the churches, almost the unanimous church, uh, teaching in the churches today, that of futurism, which says that the Antichrist is not in the world yet, but he won't be in the world until the last seven years before uh, Christ returns and that there's a seven-year period of time called the quote-unquote Great Tribulation, which you'll never find in the Bible. You'll never find that term in the Bible. A seven-year tribulation is never discussed in the Bible. It's a fiction. It's not in the Bible. But nonetheless, it's the popular teaching in most, if not all, the churches in the United States, and I have to think in, in, in Europe today, too, is a, a future seven-year period of time where the church, that is the true believers in Christ, will either be raptured out of the world before the tribulation or three and a half years after the start of the tribulation or at the end of the seven-year tribulation. These are determined, to, uh, these are, by their characteristics, are determined to be pre-tribulationistic, mid-tribulationistic, and post-tribulation, and all three are wrong. What the ancient Protestant or true Bible-believing Christians, what they believed and taught always throughout history is a historical view of Bible prophecy, which proves 
that the Antichrist is in the world, has been in the world for nearly the entire Christian era, persecuting the saints of the Most High, you know, cl claiming himself to be God, and that is the papacy. And uh, you, you're going to, you're going to, all you have to do is go back and read any and all of the Protestant writers of history. And you'll get the straight teaching from the Bible and from the church. And you'll discover that both the preteristic interpretation and the futurist interpretation, whether it be pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation, are the new kids on the block. Absolutely no one before uh, the 1800s, no one before the 1800s ever heard of preterism or futurism. It's, it's a fiction, a modern-day fiction that has been now become the main fair within all the churches. And it's error. It's purely, simplistically error. It disagrees with the Scripture. It disagrees with the ancient teaching of Bible-believing Christians throughout history. And were any Bible-believing Christian from the 17th century the 16th century, on back to the days of the apostles, were they to hear what is taught in the churches today, they would turn in their graves. And that's what this book exposes, and that's what Yerk exposes, and that's what I expose. End-time delusions, end-time lies and deceptions, they are the main fare of discussion the main thrust of the teaching of all the churches today. There is no church, almost no church, that I could give a public endorsement to in the world today. Me personally, no I don't church. know one, Tom. I don't know a single one that would dare to tell the truth about the delusions that are now the common teaching in all the churches today. Any church that would stand against what is taught in the churches today would be publicly condemned. But we don't fear that condemn condemnation, and we're going to tell the truth, even if it hurts. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. So, Pastor Ed Nichols from Newberry Church of the Nazarene in Newburgh, Oregon, says, End Time Delusions does a fantastic job of expressing what I have believed for years. Now I think this is put together in one sentence what Tom just explained for the last 10 minutes. Because End Time Delusions is expressing what Tom has taught the last 10 years on Inquisition Update for as far as I know. Right? That's correct. This is a summary of all your work actually put together in a book. And I know, Tom, that you always said I should write a book, but you are not the kind of man that writes a book, and that it is such a shame, such a shame that there is nobody who puts in a book what you have been teaching all those years. Well, by the grace of God, brother, we have found a book that puts in written uh, all the explanation that you have done for years. And this is what Pastor Ed Nichols just summarizes up here yeah that's right I've, I've been i've been asked of pity people for years tom why don't you write a book and uh i i didn't think i had enough time left in my life to write a book to, to, to expose all the lies but here we have this one end time delusions all i've got to say to my listeners who say tom you ought to write a book why would i invent the wheel here it is end time delusions It does as good a job as any I've read uh, to expose the huge lies that are now the mainstream in all the churches. I'll tell you, some people are going to say, Tom, you're exaggerating, you're getting carried away with yourself. But I'll tell you, the worst place in the world for a God-fearing, Bible-believing Christian today is in any of the churches. And I, I believe, I trust and believe that the listeners will patiently read this book together with us. You'll see the same thing. And let me ask you a question, a hypothetical question. Nobody needs to answer this question, but I think it has an answer. 
if you were Satan and you wish to deceive God's people, which is his main occupation, after all, he already, he already occupies the souls of sinners. Okay? They're his. There's no challenge for him in, in, in those that he already owns. It's God's people that he wishes to destroy and to, to, to rob from God, okay, with lies and deceptions and delusions to deceive them from knowing the truth. It's God's people who are the great objective of Satan's efforts. If Satan wished to deceive God's people, where would you expect to find him? In the churches. And that's exactly where he is. He's a master of deceiver. He is a demon transformed into an angel of light. And he's standing behind the pulpits of the churches. And he's teaching lies, grand delusions. And they are futurism and preterism. Both have an equal hand in deceiving God's people so they do not know the truth and cannot know the truth. And they make the lies more palatable than the church, or than the real truth. And uh, I, I, if, you, if you'll follow along with this book, you'll find out for yourself. You'll see with your own eyes that it's no exaggeration. It's no play on the emotions. When Tom Fress says, the worst place for a God-fearing, Bible-believing Christian in this world today is in the churches. You'll excuse that as the truth. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you, Tom. You saw the picture I put in here, right? Sermons by the Devil. That is a book that I found some time ago, and that is exactly what you are talking about, because all the pulpits... Is that is it called the pulpits where they preach from? Yeah, all the pulpits in the churches have been taken by uh, Jesuitical educated pastors uh, who went through Jesuitical seminaries and preached the word of the devil from the from the pulpits in the church. That's right. And this book, Sermons by the Devil, is uh, also free to get on the internet. Uh, this is just a picture of it, but I have the book here. Uh, you should have a look at it. It's it's a wonderful little uh, interesting booklet to read if you have the time. But let's go <clears throat> back to the praise for the end-time delusions here of this book. Uh, H.L. Champion, an evangelist administrator of the Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee, says, quote, While most Baptists today believe in the secret rapture of the saints followed by the visible return of our Lord, during the Protestant Reformation, we held to the historicist interpretation. End-time delusion presents a valid academic and theological challenge to the left-behind novels. And of course, I just want to give Tom another little moment the microphone, because Champion says, while most Baptists today believe in the secret rapture of the saints followed by the vis visible return of our Lord, Tom knows more about Freemasons in the Baptist Church than I can tell you in five minutes. So please, Tom, elaborate a little bit on that. And you know, <clears throat> uh, speaking of the viewers who watch this video, that I made a video some time ago of Tom Fress and Inquisition Update, um, Freemasons in the Churches. That is a video that you can find on my YouTube channels. Just look it up. Freemasons in the Churches. And Tom speaks about Freemasons having taken over, among others, the Baptist Church. Isn't that right, Tom? You were attending the Baptist Church all of your life. Isn't that right? That's right. Most of my adult life, I attended a Baptist Church, and they taught futurism. And I discovered, uh, through other Bible-believing Christian writings... Uh, that Freemasons popular, Freemasonry is popular in the Baptist churches. Freemasons occupy the uh, board of deacons in many Baptist churches. Freemasons occupy the space behind the pulpits in many Baptist churches. And they are the most stalwart of the futurist churches. The Baptists believe in a future seven-year period of time. They believe in a rebuilt temple on, on Temple Mount in Jerusalem. They believe that, that uh, uh, sacrifices and oblations... Will, will be offered 
uh, just as in the in in uh, in the time before Christ, and also uh, uh, that somehow in, in, after three and a half years in, in this uh, rebuilt temple, all those sacrifices and oblations will be will be caused to cease by the Antichrist. Okay. When the historicist, that which has been believed by Bible-believing Christians for the last 2,000 years, believed that that causing of the sacrifices and oblations to cease was when Jesus gave up the ghost on the, on the cross and said, it is finished. The Lamb of God bore upon his body our sins and paid the price owed to us, took away our sins, became sin for us, reconciled us to God, made reconciliation for iniquity, sealed up the vision and the prophecy in the midst of the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy. Right on time, just as Daniel prophesied it, there's no future fulfillment of that prophecy, unless, of course, you reject Jesus as its fulfillment. And that's rejection of Christ as Messiah. And that's what the Baptists believe, that there will be someone else, someone called the Antichrist, who will cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease. And only a Freemason can be so satanically indwelt to come into one of God's churches and teach such a preposterous lie to the degree that even the elect believe it. Freemasonry is a concordant order of the Jesuit order. Secretly, Freemasonry is designed to do what the Jesuits intend to do, and that is to destroy every trace of Protestant belief and teaching off the face of the earth. And the Baptist churches today are leading the way, and it's because they allow seven, they, they allow Freemasons to be the power people in the Baptist organization. If the Baptists want to serve Christ, they need to refer, return to futurism, or rather historicism, and kick the futurists out of the Baptist churches, and that means every Freemason. Kick the Freemasons out of the Baptist churches. And then the Baptist churches will return to historicism, the true biblical teaching, that which was believed by all Bible-believing Christians for nearly 2,000 years. Kick the futurists and the Freemasons out of the, of, of the Baptist and all other denominations. The Baptists, or rather the Freemasons, were simply the pack mules that drug, free, uh, that drug uh, futurism into the Protestant churches. It isn't just the Baptist churches. It's every Protestant denomination. They allowed Freemasons to occupy seats of authority with, and, by, and Bible teachers and pastors in the Protestant churches, and they're the ones who brought futurism into the churches. Whereas 150 years ago, they would never have been believed. It, it's, it's a tremendous tragedy that people don't recognize the evil that is Freemasonry. And uh, uh, listen, I've described Freemasonry as just the Protestant wing of the Jesuit order. Listen, the Jesuits have a large job to do in destroying the Protestant belief. Okay, and returning the papacy to global supremacy that he enjoyed before the Protestant Reformation. They have to destroy the very foundation of Protestantism. And there aren't enough Jesuits to go around. So they simply recruited Freemasonry to do the job of the Jesuits in the Protestant churches. When you're looking at a Freemason in a Protestant church, you're looking at a Jesuit representative. Their bounden determination is to destroy the very foundation of Protestantism. That which says that the papacy is, was, and always will be the Antichrist of Scripture, history, and prophecy. And what they want you to believe 
is that the Antichrist is not in the world today, has never been in the world today, and won't be in the world until just seven years before Christ's return. And that way, you'll go along with this ecumenical movement to reunite with the Roman Catholic Church. That has been their goal from the very beginning. Freemasonry and God's house are incompatible. They are mutually exclusive. And you must kick the, Je the Freemasons and the Jesuit influence out of your Protestant church if you wish to know the truth. My, exa my example is to get completely out of the churches and follow Christ. Keep your Bible under your arm. Keep it open. Keep reading it. Keep praying that the truth will be exposed and, uh, and pray, for, pray for those who are still deceived into believing this rapture futurist nonsense that's taught, that's taught in all the churches today. Sorry to go on so long about it, but it, it's, it's a very important thing. If you want to know the truth, you got to get the Freemasons out of God's house. Back to you, Yerk. Oh, don't be sorry, Tom, because we are laying a foundation here for the book reading to come. And the stronger our foundation is, the better understood will be the book reading and discussion, you know. I think it is always very important to lay a good foundation. And you did the same thing when you went to read the book uh, Exploding the Israel Deception, uh, or The Israel Deception Exploded in the end of 2010 and beginning of 2011. And uh, the first two videos where you did that explanation before you even went into the book, I put into the playlist uh, so the people can watch that because uh, I've uploaded them here. They are in the playlist. The very first two videos is Tom laying the foundation before reading the book, The Israel Deception Exploded. And this book, End Time Delusions, is a much farther going subject than only, quote unquote, only The Israel Deception Exploded. But it combines that with much more true biblical explanation, which has nothing to do with preterism or futurism or any rapture. Yeah, Let's make that sure. So I think it is very important that we build a good foundation and on that foundation we can go on. Then we do not need to repeat ourselves over and over again in the broadcasts, but we can make progress and we can show you the truth like it has never been shown to you before. I can assure you that when you follow us in this reading, an explanation of this book. Well, W. Finnell, to continue with the praise of the uh, End Time Delusions book here, he is the founder of Historicism Research Foundation Incorporated, says, Steve Wahlberg is one of the most dynamic and impressive spokesmen for the, international, uh, for the traditional Protestant interpretation of prophecy known as historicism. I wholeheartedly endorse this latest work. And we go to Herb Frizzle, Sr. from Cedar Hill, Texas. He says, quote, End time delusions counteracts the wild speculation or of left behind theology that exists today. Edward William Fudge, author and director from Edward Fudge Ministry, says, quote, Can I can I break in for a second? Oh, please. I don't want the listeners I don't want the listeners to miss the reference here. We've all heard of the left behind series of books and movies that have promoted this idea of a future seven-year period of quote-unquote great tribulation, and that during this seven-year period of time, or rather before the seven-year period of time, just before the seven-year period of great tribulation, the rapture takes place, and all God's children are taken off into heaven in a secret uh, escape. And then Antichrist is finally revealed, and for seven years he terrorizes the world. That is the entire gist of the Left Behind series of books and videos and movies. They've made multiple millions upon millions of dollars selling this. And it has filled up the churches with lies and delusions. It is the one of Satan's greatest works, the Left Behind series of books. Wild speculation. That's what it is. Not only that. But it's anti-Protestant baloney. Okay? The whole object of the left-behind theologians today, 
the futurist theologians today, the Freemasonic theologians today, is not wild speculation. It's deliberate delusion so that you do not ever know or suspect that the Antichrist has been a figment, uh, has been a, a, uh, uh, a part of all of Christian history. Just as we worship Christ and, 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 and him crucified, right alongside him is the Antichrist of Rome, the papacy, which claims to be the vicar of Christ or the replacement of the Son of God on earth. That's what vicar of Christ means. They've been juxtaposed side by side for the entire Christian era. The papacy came into fruition along about the 4th century, and it's been all since that time that we've had Christ on the one hand and Antichrist on the other. That's been the belief of Bible-believing Christians for up to the early 1800s. And I'm sure it's brand new to most of Yerkes listeners. You've never heard this before. That's just how thoroughly they have deceived God's house. You've never heard of the papacy being the Antichrist. But you must understand that no one believed what is believed today except those who uh, became Christians after about 1805. And prior to 1805, what is believed, what is taught in the churches today was never heard of before. If you spoke of the Antichrist before about 1805, your response would be, well, it's the papacy. If you walked up and down Main Street USA or Main Street England or Main Street France or Main Street uh, Germany and asked somebody on the street, who is the Antichrist, the answer would be unanimous. The papacy. Every Bible-believing Christian would tell you the Antichrist is the papacy. Now you can't find anybody that will tell you the truth. That's how thoroughly the churches have been used to indoctrinate and to deceive God's people so that they don't even know who the Antichrist is. And they're all deceived by him. They think the, the man of sin in Rome is a man of God. They think that the Pope of Rome should be able to address a joint session of Congress in the United States of America. That he should be able to preach morality to a whole world of people from a global platform. That's how much power the papacy has today. That's how much power the papacy has gained since 18, the early 1800s when the world was deluded with what is known to the world today as preterism and futurism. The truth is historicism. And until you understand what historicism is and what every Bible-believing Christian believed from about 1805 all the way back to the apostles, only then will your eyes be opened. An Inquisition update, I spent 10 years on the air every day restoring the historicist interpretation of Bible prophecy and exposing the Antichrist for who he is and who he always has been and who he will be in the future. But if you want to know who caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease, you'll find out that was done in the midst of the week, in the midst of the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy. 2,000 years ago. And, and, and to believe anything else is anti-Christ. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom, for your explanation. And as the people saw, I put a few pictures in here, for example, from the book that we read together a few years ago, uh, Futurism and Preterism, yeah, uh, by Paul Owen and Charles Jennings. We did, I think, uh, 14 uh, videos on that and then you went into that book alone again on Inquisition Update 
and you did, I think, 40 readings of the same book, all by yourself, without me. And of course, I put a few pictures in here that state that the papacy is the Antichrist. So let's continue and uh, in this praise. It says here from Edward William Fudge, who is an author and the director of Edward Fudge Ministries. He says, quote, Steve Wahlberg has done his homework. Although I am not convinced of every detail he presents, he challenges us all to study the Bible for ourselves and not to fall for every glib and easy answer that comes down on the road. Now, this last sentence that Edward William Fudge says here, I will absolutely support. He challenges us to study the Bible for ourselves. Let no man deceive you. You can only be deceived by other men if you do not read the Bible for yourself, if you do not control everything that is going on in the world against the Bible, but when you run after other men. And that's, I'm sorry to say, the world today. They are too lazy to pick up the book for themselves and study and understand for themselves. And in many regards, it's not even their fault, because they are just not led by the Holy Spirit. And if you read the Bible without the Holy Spirit, you can as well read Moby Dick. You will get as much understanding out of it. You need the Holy Spirit for that, and therefore you need to pray. You need to pray to our Father in Heaven to leave you to Jesus, to lead you to Jesus Christ, that He imputes righteousness in you, and that the Holy Spirit will lead you when you study the Bible. That is a very, very important point. Don't listen to other men. Don't listen to me or don't listen to Tom. Read the Bible for yourself. You will have the same understanding than we have. Then we are obsolete. Wonderful. I wouldn't love anything else but that. Really. And Tom also. We are just here to give you a little bit support. To push you in the right direction. And the right direction can only be study on yourself. When I started my investigation into the New World Order, as I called it at that time, and, 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 and I, found, I, I wanted to know the truth when I thought that I did it for myself, when I didn't understand that God was, was pushing me, I always said, the only truth that I can believe is the truth that I find out for myself. And I think Tom agrees with me on that. Because Tom and I, we did a study together some years ago, I think it was three years ago right now or something like that. We did a study for two hours on the internet because we both read the book Rules of Evil by F. Tapper Saucy. And in that book, there is a quote where F. Tapper Saucy says that he found on the Jewish Encyclopedia an article that says that the Rothschilds are the guardians of the Vatican treasury. And I wanted to find that out for myself. I just didn't want to believe F. Tapasosi writes that in the book, and Tom neither. So we went on a search for two hours. I think it was. <laughs> it was quite long, because we didn't even know the internet tool of control F to search for a certain term when we were on the right page. We went through the whole Jewish encyclopedia that night until we found the quote. The truth that you find out for yourself is the only truth that you can really accept. And that is so important. And that is not given to you by other men. It was not given to us by Tapa Saucy in his book, but he pointed to the direction. And we did our research ourselves. And that's what you should do, dear brother and sister. Do your own research. Study the Bible. Study the Bible for yourself. Be led by the Holy Spirit and see that you come to the same answers to the questions posed that we do. See that you come to the same conclusion as we do. And then we are brothers in Christ and in the truth. Now, Pastor Bill Wilton from the Sunrise Church in Oregon says about this book, End Time Delusions is a much-needed addition to the library of works on eschatology. Read it. Read it again and share it with a friend. I concur. I, I believe this book should be read by every Bible-believing Christian. 
It should be read not once but twice. And it should be shared with family and friends, anybody else who values the historical truth. Uh, you're going to find out that what, what Steve Wolberg speaks of in this book is far, far more believable and makes far, far better sense than any of the nonsense they're teaching in the churches today. You know, the church, the, the, the truth just has a certain ring to it. When you hear the truth for the first time, it resonates in your soul, okay? In, in, in another way of speaking, the truth is its own witness. And that's what you're going to hear when you read this book. You're going to hear a truth that has never been uttered in your ears before. And it's going to make so much greater sense than anything you've been taught in the past that you'll be glad to abandon the lies and embrace the truth. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. And as you see, I just opened the book Rules of Evil of F. Tapasosi because Pat Shannon, who is a journalist at large who uh, speaks, uh, who writes the uh, preface to the book Rulers of Evil, he says in his very last sentence something that very much counts for the book End Time Delusions. He says, and I'm going to change this now into the book End Time Delusions, End Time Delusions is an indispensable study book that you'll probably deface from cover to cover with high lightning. By all means, keep it on your lower library shelf within close reach of inquisitive children. And I absolutely second what Pat Shannon says about rules of evil and take these words and use them for the book End Time Delusions of Steve Wahlberg. Don Schaefer from Euless in Texas says, I've studied end, times, uh, end time theories for over 20 years and thought I had heard it all. Yet, end time delusions masterfully ties mysterious Bible passages together in a fresh, eye-opening way. This book is suited for both the long-time prophecy buff and people just now developing an interest in Bible prophecy. Stefan Slucky who is a minister of a Presbyterian church in Australia, says, quote, End Time Delusions is a concise, refreshing survey of a vitally important aspect of Christian teaching. As a Reformed minister, I warmly recommend it as worthy of careful study. Bill Calavis, webmaster from historicist.com, which we already mentioned earlier, of this Uh, mania uh, of uh, champion. He is from. No, no. He is from. From uh, where is this here? Historicist.com. That was somewhere here. Here, uh, Finnell from Historicism Research Research Center. That is probably connected to Historicist.com, the website. He says Steve Wahlberg's book is a well-written jolt of common sense. There's a change coming. End time delusions is part of it. We are speaking about a change in your understanding of biblical eschatology. That's right. Steve McNally, PhD from San Juan Capistrano in California, says, quote, Steve Wahlberg's passion matches that of the great reformers. Now, that is quite a mouthful, right? Absolutely. He's admitting what I know about Steve Wahlberg. He preaches exactly what the reformers taught. And what did the reformers teach? That the Antichrist is the papacy, The Antichrist is a historical figure all throughout the all throughout the Christian era, and that there's no future fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel. That the 70th week of Daniel was Christ's seven-year ministry in the midst in the midst of which he he gave up his life on the on, on the cross and caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease by becoming the Lamb of God Himself the sacrifice for all sin. And uh, three and a half years later, that gospel was preached to the Jews until the end of that seven-year period for an additional three and a half years, and then the gospel went to the Gentiles. That was all fulfilled in history 
perfectly and completely just the way Daniel prophesied it. No one should be able to deceive you anymore. Now, all this talk about a seven-year period of time is part of the grand delusion. Any talk about a, a modern nation state of Israel, any talk about a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, any talk about the establishment of animal sacrifices and oblations, all is part and parcel of the great delusion. And the purpose of it is simple. They want you to accept a false messiah. Anyone who denies that Jesus fulfilled the 70th week of Daniel 2,000 years ago has prepared himself to receive a false messiah in the future. And I'm here to tell you, it's going to be the papacy. And history is going to bear out the truth. Steve Wahlberg knows it, and I believe Yerk knows it, and I believe the Protestant reformers knew it, and they wrote about it. Now, there was no talk about rebuilding a temple, but there was speculation that if, if, if Rome's uh, teaching was to be believed, there had to be a rebuilt temple, there had to be a restoration of the, of the nation state of Israel, there had to be a restoration of animal sacrifices. But we know Jesus fulfilled that perfectly and completely 2,000 years ago. There's no future fulfillment of it, unless, of course, the whole world is deceived. There isn't a true historicist, Bible-believing Christian that would believe anything but evil about the modern nation-state of Israel, about any rebuilt temple, about any offering of animal sacrifices. When Jesus said it is finished, he meant just exactly what he said. Jesus was the last sacrifice. His blood was the last uh, oblation. It is finished. Our redemption is secure. It's sure. It's in the past. It was 2,000 years ago, and we don't need the initiation of any more sacrifices. And anybody who makes a sacrifice for sin today has spit in the face of, the, of, of, of our Messiah. Think of the Eucharist of the and the Roman God. Catholic Mass. That's the whole purpose of the Mass in the Roman Catholic Church to denounce Jesus as an imposter. They want you to believe in a future Christ. And it, they want the papacy to replace Jesus. That's why they call the Pope the Vicar of Christ. That's what it means. Vicar of Christ means the replacement of Christ. And... Uh, that's why, they, that's why they preach a future fulfillment of the 70th week, because they deny that Jesus fulfilled the 70th week. Okay? You talk about a grand delusion, a great delusion that has deceived the very elect. That's it. And I was taught it for 50 years of my life. And it isn't until now that God has revealed the truth to me that I can confidently stay sane in whatever company I'm in the 70th week of Daniel was fulfilled perfectly and completely by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, and any future fulfillment of it is part of the grand delusion of the papacy, the Antichrist of Scripture, history, and prophecy. Back to you, Yerk. And Jesus Christ even warned us of a future fulfillment of the prophecy that he and the apostles later, among them Paul, and John, and in the Old Testament, of course, the prophet Daniel gave. When, I think it is in Matthew 28, Jesus Christ warned and said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye received me not. Someone else will come in the name the Father did not give him, and him you will receive. That's right. But we are going into that a little bit later in the book, and deeper than right now. But just here is a little Bible verse that you should reflect on, that you should think about. What did Jesus mean with that? And how did he address the scribes and the Pharisees and the Jews at that time? 
saying, I have come in my Father's name and you receive me, not what someone else is coming in the name the Father didn't give him, and him you will receive. How will they receive that man if they are not gathered together in the nation state of Israel? That is not biblical, but Jesus knew that was coming. Absolutely. Now, Steve Wahlberg's passion matches that of the great reformer, Steve McNally says. He continues to say, whether one agrees or not, it is vital reading to expand the dialogue beyond the fictional novel and movie-hyped end-time scenario that has conditioned the theology of millions of Christians. I disagree. That with has conditioned, yeah, let me just mm-hmm. get a little bit of this here, that has conditioned the theology, that has brainwashed the people and indoctrinated the, the people with a different theology, not with the biblical understanding, but with their futurist understanding. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tom, please, what did you That's want to right. say? Well, he, he, he says that they have conditioned the theology of millions of Christians. no. It's billions of Christians. Yeah, it's billions, yeah. Sad to say. Sad to say. That's right. Okay. Now, uh, Jeff Zaremsky, who is a Messianic rabbi of the Beth El Shalom Congregation, St. Petersburg in Florida, says, quote, End-time delusions avoids the two ditches of putting the Jewish people on a divine pedestal or condemning us as Christ killers and forsaken by God. Steve Wahlberg's balanced view will cause us to work together for sharing the good news with everyone, Jewish or non-Jewish. And just let me remind you, the good news, that is just another word for the gospel. Then we come into the table of contents, but that is something for the next broadcast and not for today anymore, because we already past the hour of this broadcast, but I hope that after viewing the first few videos that I did on my own on exploding the Israel deception in this playlist and now this coming as the next video with me having Tom Fress wonderfully at my guest. Thank you very much Tom for being with me. With this little inauguration I hope we all see you back when we come back next time and Tom and I have uh, made an appointment so far that we will try to meet every week once on Wednesday evening to come together and do a reading of that book, when then we will go into the book and we will give you a lecture like you have never had before. That's at least what we hope. A lecture of truth. A lecture based on the Bible, the 1611 authorized version of the King James Bible, the only true preserved Bible in the English language today, and to my understanding, almost the only preserved Bible in any language today we have today in the world. It is absolutely of vital importance to have a real Bible, a true Bible, because when you have a forgerized Bible, you will be in a delusion. You know, The Schofield Bible, for example, is a Bible that lives on its footmarks. It's based on the King James, but it teaches futurism because you go into the footnotes and that's the delusion. And we don't want you to fall for any delusion. We want you to come out of the delusion. We want you to understand the end time delusions. And this is why Tom and I came together to read to you this book. So I want to leave my final comment of today's broadcast to Tom. Okay, and uh, you've heard today a lot of talk, uh, unfamiliar talk, talk that you've never heard before. And many of you are probably skeptical, wondering how in the world could all of Christianity be in such grave error as Tom seems to indicate, as Yerk seems to indicate. Stay tuned for further broadcasts out of this book, and you'll come to the same conclusion. Not by any arm twisting, but by your own common sense. You'll discover, as we have, that the churches are not to be trusted anymore to give us the truth. And uh, it's sad. It's really, really sad. But there is a virus that's spread around the world today. And it doesn't kill just flesh and blood. It kills the soul, too. It's a lie. It's called futurism. 
every pastor teaches it today, you'll find out it's a lie and the truth will make far more sense. And when you believe the truth, you'll find yourself in great company, the company of every Bible-believing Christian for approximately 1,500 years, all the way back to the, to, all the way back to the apostolic era. You'll find yourself in perfect company with all the Protestant reformers, because what they believed is exactly what Steve Wolberg is going to reveal to you out of this book. You'll see for yourself that it makes far more sense than the ridiculous lies that are taught in the churches today. I'll see you next time. Thanks uh, for having me, Yerk, and uh, good day By to you. recognizing listeners. Jerusalem and moving our embassy there, uh, our country is saying what we know from history and the Bible, that Jerusalem has actually been the capital of Jerusalem for 3,000, or uh, capital Israel. of Israel for 3,000 years. And here's why that is so significant. That historical truth that Jerusalem has been the capital for 3,000 years absolutely explodes the myth that comes from the left that somehow the Jewish people just came into that land 70 years ago and they took it away from the Palestinians and that the Jews have no rightful claim to it. The Bible says and history confirms that God gave that land to the Jewish people and I believe as Genesis 12 says God blesses those countries that bless Israel and he curses those countries countries that curse Israel, I believe President Trump and the United States are not only on the right side of history in this decision, they're on the right side of God. And here it is, the Balfour Declaration. What do you feel when you, when you see it here? I genuinely feel it's one of the most extraordinary moments in the history of the Jewish people. If you think it took 3,000 years uh, to get to this, and then you say, how did this miracle happen? It's the most incredible piece of opportunism. I mean, if you think you had an impoverished uh, would-be scientist, Hein Weizmann, who somehow gets to England, meets a few people, including members of my family, seduces them, he has such great charm and conviction. He gets to Balfour, and he unbelievably persuades Balfour and Lloyd George, the Prime Minister, and most of the ministers, that this idea of um, the national home for um, Jews should be allowed to take place. I mean, it's so, so unlikely. You come back to the big point, which is that this is perhaps the greatest event in Jewish life for thousands of years. And it's a miracle that it took place.